<sighs> All right, you guys. So here's a fun example. This is the chart of Jerry Seinfeld, who's pretty famous for his sitcom Seinfeld. Uh, I, I'm a fan of Jerry Seinfeld, you know, so right off the bat, I'm just going to say that I'm a little bit biased, but uh, I've always thought he's made some pretty good points. And I've always felt like he had a lot of wisdom to share. Um, a lot of stand-up comedians, in my opinion, have a lot of wisdom to share, not just him. And I plan to make a video on a lot of stand-up comedians whenever I get their birth data. But so far, I only have accurate birth data of like one. <laughs> so I need to get a little bit more of their birth data. And when I do that, you can make a little video about, about that. But this is just looking at Jerry Seinfeld's chart. And he's super famous, ridiculously famous. Um, I won't, yeah, to begin with, his birth time may not be accurate. He's given an, about eight degrees of Taurus rising on astro.com. It's given a rotten rating of C, so it's like kind of questionable. So this ascendant may be off. And I could see him being a Taurus, but I could also see him being a Gemini or an Aries um, pretty easily. So I'm going to speak more about like, I'm not going to speak as much about the houses maybe as I will about the planets and signs and the Avashtas, which are these things we have in Vedic astrology. Mm. Excuse me. These things we have in Vedic astrology where they're Avasht means like a state or a level or a condition or a place that's on. Like Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita to do actions from the yoga vashta state, from the state of yoga, of understanding yoga and union. So in the same way, like different planets can be in a state of being awake or being on a level, a high level of consciousness. And it shows good karma from past lives with that planet. And then likewise, they can be in a low state or an afflicted state or an alarmed state. Uh, that's one of the names for when a planet is debilitated, it's said to be in an alarmed avashta. Um, and so it can't do a lot of good there or as much good. Um, so that's what avashtas are. And so I want to talk about those with his chart. So in my last video, I talked about the Venus Jupiter conjunction avashta, where Jupiter is said to delight Venus. So Venus is in a good state, but then Venus is actually starving Jupiter and taking down Jupiter in terms of his state or his level of consciousness. And so Jupiter gets confused by Venus and all the beauty and luxury that he loses sight of seeing happiness within himself and within his ability to let goodness flow through him and his creative inspirations. Um, but you notice how I talked a lot about how, you know, this placement in the first, second, or seventh especially can make one have lots of sexual partners, like have sex with, if they're a man, they can have sex with hundreds and hundreds of women. If they're a woman, hundreds and hundreds of men. And, but at the same time, still not maybe feel fulfilled. Or even if they're in a gay relationship, it's the same. Um, but they can still not necessarily find the degree of fulfillment that someone, or happiness that someone with just one partner might have had their whole life. Um, that person might have had a lot more fulfillment and happiness overall. And it's, uh, yeah, so we looked at what Napoleon's chart, Bill Clinton's, that was probably the best chart and a couple of personal people I know examples. So Jerry Seinfeld has this as well. He has Venus and Jupiter in the same sign. And I know if you're like a Western astrologer, you wouldn't think of that as a conjunction, Venus and Jupiter, because they're, you know, on the opposite ends of the sign. But for this, for Avashtas, that is a major impact, a major thing, that's a major issue in his life is this Venus starving as Jupiter. And you would overlook that if you were looking at just orbs and things. So when a planet is conjunct another planet, uh, it can be in one degree or zero degrees of the sign like this Venus. And the other planet Jupiter can be at 29 degrees and it's still starving it. Um, it's kind of like, if you were, if you're Jupiter trying to work on your creative dharma and say you're trying to, yeah, write a book or teach something and then Venus shows up, like this beautiful babe shows up in the room 
Well, she could be at the very edge of the room, but you're still going to be really distracted by her. Not as much as if she's like right next to you. Can you smell her? Or like, just like, you know, oh my God, she has this amazing perfume or whatever. Um, but even if she's way over there, you're still going to be distracted. May not, maybe not as much, but still distracted. So you don't need to use orbs of influence for these things. All right, now just think about, you know, if you've ever watched the show Seinfeld, the whole show is about him trying to date women and always having a kind of superficial interactions and not feeling fulfilled from them. And then even uh, like letting little things kind of let him ruin the whole goodness of the relationship because of one little issue, you know, like she's, she, uh, gosh, I, well, I've seen like every episode so many times, but I can't think of an example right now. But, you know, there's just so many weird social situations that Jerry finds himself in and that he has to, oh, like the girl with the crazy laugh because he's a comedian. She has the worst laugh. And he's dating this girl who has the worst laugh, but everything else is great. And he can't be with her. He can't handle it because her laugh is so horrible. Um, and, and these little details, you know, so that's how Jupiter is being starved by Venus. And in this case, Jupiter is also starved by Mercury because it's in the sign of Mercury in Gemini. So whenever Gemini, Jupiter is in Gemini or Virgo, he gets starved by Mercury as well. That can play out in the same way where, um, like the episode where he accident, he's like rubbing his nose like this, but a woman is parked in traffic on the other side. And so it appears that he's picking his nose, you know? And so that's the girl that he's dating sees him in traffic, apparently picking his nose. She breaks out with him because of that. He's like, no, I wasn't. I wasn't doing that whole episode about that. So there's all these little weird interactions that, that uh, he, he seems to have luck with relationships, the Venus delighted. But at the same time, he gets, it doesn't really give him the fulfillment. And it ends up being con a loss or a confusing thing or something a.k.a. Jupiter being starved, you know, because Jupiter is your happiness. So you can think about that next time you watch Seinfeld and maybe have a, have a kick out of that. Now, uh, another thing is that Sun and, and Saturn are opposite. So if, it, if he was born this time, this would make it very extreme in the first and seventh, but even if he was born any time, just having Sun and Saturn opposite is a major placement for uh, narcissism. Um, and you could say that a lot of his show is about him and his friends being narcissistic and them struggling with their own narcissism and selfish tendencies. Um, the whole, the, like the season finale is all about them basically going to court and all the people they've screwed over are <laughs> finally there to tell them that and, and tell them how bad of people they are basically. Um, Sun in the sign of Venus also makes the sun starved. That's the uh, sun. Yeah, sun in Taurus is a is a starvation of Ashta for the sun. So the sun also is not able to fulfill his kingdom as well and gets distracted by Venus or beauty or women um, or cars. Another funny little bit of trivia about Jerry Seinfeld is he's obsessed with cars and cars are vehicles. Vehicles and all conveyances are ruled by Venus because Venus rules getting down your path more smoothly in life. And so, yeah, so that's also really funny. He's like really into cars and he spent tons of money on cars. He's got like a crazy freakish car collection with his money. That's what he spent his money on. And so we can see that uh, because the sun is starved by Venus. So it's this idea that having more things or more pleasure, more luxury will make you more happy. And then also because Venus and Jupiter are in the second, Venus is in a sign of short distance travel, Gemini as well. Um, yeah, so we can see that connection as well. A few notes, what are my notes here? Yeah, so he's a great example of the Venus-Jupiter conjunction or uh, starvation thing. Great example of Mars and Rahu conjunct because he's very logical and everything he... Uh, you know, he makes really good points about society and about social things by, by using his logical intelligence. And the reason I'm saying that is because Mars rules the logical intelligence and Mars rules thinking logically. Um, he also has like 
fits where he he like explodes uh, on the show, you know, and he's trying to hold things back, and he explodes. And we see that Mercury is starving that Mars a little bit, and so again, that can have to do with like weird little details, him getting hung up on them, you know, and not being able to kind of see the big picture. So that's a big issue in his life. But I think he's actually done really well with this overall, and he's used that energy and channeled it in really positive ways. And also another fact that a lot of people don't know is that Jerry Seinfeld is a big time meditator. He's done a transcendental meditation uh, for over 20 years, every day, he said, or uh, probably not every day, but yeah, he does a basic 20 minute meditation practice every day. And I've got to say, the guy is just more Zen than most people in Hollywood. I can tell when he's on a talk show that he just says what he wants to say and doesn't like genuinely doesn't seem so inhibited um or so hung up on things uh it doesn't mean i agree with everything he says but it's just nice to see that and that's refreshing and then again uh in vedic astrology a really important thing is the atma karaka atma means self and karaka means producer or maker so the self maker the planet that is most you your self factor normally we just look at sun sun ascendant ruling the ruler of the ascendant but in Vedic astrology, we have this special thing called the Atmakarika, the planet that has acquired the most degree, excuse me, the planet that has covered the most of a sign. It has cut, got the most degrees. So the planet with the highest degrees in a sign, not counting the rising sign, the ascendant or the lagna, uh, and not counting Rahu or Ketu. So in this chart, it's, oh yeah, in this chart, it's Mercury, because Mercury is at 27 degrees of Aries. So Mercury is his soul planet or his career planet or his self planet. So wow, that's amazing because Mercury is the planet of comedians and also the planet of uh, observations. And that's his humor is observational humor is what he's so well known for. Uh, Mercury in Aries is a placement that means one has to really pay attention to like being more pure and the, being a better person and like having a strong character and not getting caught up in like the little issues of life and all the little details that Mercury finds and just kind of uh, it's, it's another indication for him having to just focus on the big picture in life. Um, I can see that in one way. It's also kind of connected to the Mars and Rahu. Mars and Rahu conjunct is like saying the same thing in some ways. And I can see that because in, in a, he does have a lot of ethics, at least for his, as a stand-up comedian. You know, stand-up comedians, there's no ethics necessary for that job. You actually might have to not have some <laughs> to be able to say the things you want to say and, you know, because you're going to offend people or hurt people's feelings or whatever and just you have to deal with that. But one thing that I loved about him was like this, uh, something I heard him say once where he never wanted to use profanity to get a joke. And he had this one joke that was great and he got a lot of laughs from it, but it was like the way he used the F word was he could tell that was all they were really laughing at. And so he told himself, all right, I'm going to tell that joke again tonight and I'm going to take the F word out of it. And if it still gets the same amount of laughs, I'll keep it. But if it doesn't, I'm going to scrap that joke entirely. And then he told a joke and nobody laughed when he used it without using the emphasis of the profanity. And so he just scrapped that entire word, that entire uh, joke. And he just really wanted to make sure that it was his intelligence that was really getting the joke out of you and not just, you know, saying vulgar things or, you know, being shocking or slapsticky. And I just thought, wow, that's like really, really impressive and really respectable. So that's probably that Mars and with Rahu in the ninth house for him. If, if the house and the ascendant is correct, that would make it very important to develop ethics, you know, and have good concepts of right and wrong and good paradigms that you go through life with because Mars represents our paradigms and principles and ethics and things. Okay. One more thing. Um, K2 and cancer is also really unique and, appropriate for him because that can show a really deep emotional and social intelligence and so that's probably what he drew his unique observations from and um, also it was the k2 dasha if the time is correct it was the k2 dasha that he got famous in that's saying that seems so weird and unexpected you know um the south node is a very like 
not worldly thing and it typically hides things even so like you could if k2 is in your seventh you could have a great relationship but it's like more hidden than the average one is or something so with this uh that is odd but one thing i can say is that that is the pada of the chart um the lagna pada the pada is the foot and it's this whole other part of vedic astrology that i don't i'm not gonna be able to get into in this video but like the foundation of the chart um, what you end up at, what you end your foot, you know, like what you go to at the end. And that is the pada for him is K2 and cancer. So I'm thinking that K2, you know, activated his pada, the foot, the end of his chart, the final thing, which is Seinfeld for him. Um, cool. Hope you guys enjoy this video. And uh, yeah, I'll put up some more soon. Take care.